Hello internet and welcome to the 36th episode of the Deep Fried Neurons podcast. It is a podcast about things and stories that I find interesting and most times I deviate from my niche quite often. And I know what you're thinking. You've looked at the length of this episode and already wondered what the fuck happened there. <laughs> um Dheeraj was on the podcast who is a very dear good friend of mine that I met online. I mean basically we commented on each other's posts enough to be friends with each other eventually. we just new people in common something like that doesn't matter the point is me and dheeraj ended up doing this episode together and we talked about amor fati to psychedelics to hinduism casteism and shit like that also a fair warning so like my interview equipment sort of broke down right before we started recording so we we had to make do with what we had that's why like the sound quality on this episode is a little rusty I mean my sound is my voice specifically is like super echoey and uh, there's a little bit of disturbance in the background sometimes but I hope you guys don't mind too much um that's it I'm going to cue the fucking Hello everyone this is our second attempt at recording something today Um on Deep Fried Neurons today we have Dheeraj Shah as you might have read in the title. Yes guys that's me. I mean I don't know what to say. <laughs> Dheeraj is at least 10th pass. Uh <laughs> at least 8th pass is what we can say. Well he works in marketing at uh, White Owl where they sell beer. Yeah it's a craft beer company based out of Mumbai that's in India. Mm yeah like the craft beer yeah. market is booming in india but you today we are not here to talk about what i do or beers or anything yeah i, ju- I just wanted to introduce you man yeah. and also like sort of like tell white out to give me some money money <laughs> <laughs> i'll get you two beers <laughs> thank you yes that works i'll take any <laughs> yeah like i did get him alcohol today is like bro i'm not drinking yes but, but anyway You know my parents listen to this shit right? Oh, we cut that off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, since I didn't accept it, it makes me look good. So <laughs> I'm going to leave that in. Not making my mom listen to this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so basically Dheeraj is here to talk to me about a very beautiful concept that we discussed earlier for about 40 to 50 minutes. Yeah. Pre-recording called Amor Fati. Amor Fati. And I made this joke before but I'm going to do it again because you guys didn't hear it is that amor fati sounds like the love of one's farts but that's not what it is <laughs> uh, the literal translation is love of one's own fate um the more intellectual ones of you the ones who are like me might have <laughs> I'm laughing <laughs> in the background yeah so it's sorry, okay sorry, sorry. it was supposed to be a joke so yes uh You might have recognized it from uh, that book The Gay Science and uh, of course Homo Eco I finally remembered the name where he's talking about the ultimate person the ubermensch who comes over everything but of course there's more to the ubermensch essay than that um if you recognize that that's great but that's the philosophical experiment we're talking about and I've already explained to Dheeraj what Amor Fati is like the the philosophical experiment it is basically if your life didn't start at one point and end at one point instead it was an eternal loop basically you die and you respawn as yourself in the same place in time and same things are going to happen to you no matter what you do would you still be enthusiastically accepting of all the consequences that you have left behind ouch like that just sounds terrible <laughs> like just to start with i mean uh like uh, what i understand from amor fati is like you know you relive every minuscule detail of your life over and over again and you are happy about it like overly what's the right word uh, enthusiastically. enthusiastically happy about it i wouldn't use the word happy but you're enthusiastically oh. accepting you're okay accepting is the word not happy happy is a different yeah. concept okay happily accepting happily accepting or accepting yeah sure you have acceptance towards it 
Um, I mean, acceptance sort of has this indifference vibe. Like, if mm. you just have acceptance of your own life, that's Buddhism. <laughs> yeah. So enthusiastically yeah. accepting. I mean, that's the best way I can put it. But yeah. probably a prof- professor of philosophy would do better. I don't think I, it doesn't matter though. But like, just to just think about the concept is troublesome. Like, it's like lit- like troubling me just to get the idea that oh you're going to live the entire life you've been living again and be accepting about it over a period of time is very troublesome mm-hmm. like i can't imagine doing that okay i can't living the same i can't imagine living the same day again mm-hmm. so infinitely living in a endless loop you yep. rather die <laughs> okay i'm going to give a personal example yeah and you fuckers out there i'm trusting you not to try to dig it out <laughs> when i was 13 i i had very early access to the internet okay. like given the fact that i grew up in a village okay when i was 13 i created a tumblr blog okay to fan like fanboy about green day and there's some cringy shit that i've posted mm-hmm. at least five times a day okay to so basically frederick nietzsche wants me to not only understand that i'm going to do it again but he wants me to be happy about the cringe i've left behind mm. and us like you will be doing that over and over and over yeah. again also i also have to admit that i got woke after i moved to a city mm. so till 10th grade i was pretty conservative not that i was i was like full on fit in with mm. everybody but i had to really ball of that see I, i think just the concept of woke is very new mm-hmm. and i mean i used to be homophobic i think everyone was because there was no like that's how you grew up right like yeah. in village that's what they think I mean, or, but it's not just in village even in cities the concept still exists of homophobia and like it's wrong mm. quote i'm not saying it's wrong from my perspective but society says it's wrong mm-hmm. and uh, you don't understand you don't have a sense of uh, like judgment what's right or wrong because you listen to your parents friends and this and that yeah uh, from a long time and once you start like you know thinking on your own is when you make a judgment saying uh, like oh what you said was wrong mm-hmm. and for most of us it's talking like so it's considered as like you know talking back to your parents or your elders yeah like, yeah you know you've told you this how can you say it's wrong so it's it's works on multiple levels yeah, yeah. so the concept of wokeness or like you know understanding a broader perspective than what you know will come from when you like you know get to know more people who are not in just your circle mm-hmm. that for for you that means coming from your village to a city yeah for someone else it could mean like you know just being exposed to internet mm. the internet helped yes like i used to say homophobic shit because like that's what everybody did yeah but it was easier for me to switch instantly once i was in an environment where it wasn't punished mm-hmm. to be tolerant of gay people mm-hmm. like i instantly made the switch there was no in, there was no discomfort in my brain okay but that's not what this discussion is about <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we already like. I'm so know. sorry. <laughs> yeah. The point is, like, how far can you stretch a murder party? Because yeah, I mean, I could live with the cringe, some of yeah. the cringe at least. Yeah. yeah. You could see. I, I don't mind living with the cringe. You know, like I say that I don't mind living the same life I've lived right now, again, like you know. one time two time three time that's fine but if it's stuck in an endless loop and you know every minute detail which is going to happen or which you are going to do 
that's just ridiculous like there is you're not controlling your own faith and you have to accept that is something which will drive me crazy um okay so i mean i brought this up before off record but i'm going to bring it up again hmm. what if hmm. okay the point is that not only does the same thing happen yeah but you see choose the same outcomes over and over again if i am choosing it yeah. in an eternal loop in an eternal loop i would be fine with it okay. if i had no choice over my actions just theoretically right like you, you might you might not have choice but let's say i don't have a choice right mm-hmm. but if i'm thinking that i have a choice and i'm doing the, that would still like you know i i would do it that would float your boat a little that would float my boat but just knowing that oh this is an endless loop will drive me crazy if i don't know this is an endless loop and i'm doing the same thing again and again thinking i am in control fine with me but then again amor fati is not about that it's yeah. about knowing that this is going to happen this is like, going to happen these are your consequences these are the consequences and this is what will happen over and over and you have to be accepting enthusiastically accepting, accepting of this no not something i can like you know i mean like, do interestingly it was written by uh, frederick nietzsche during the worst of his times <laughs> like this was right before he had that mental breakdown where he like looked at a horse and be like i read you i understand you that's just him on some hard drugs no this i think i think he just thought about the universe's complete indifference to his existence so hard that yeah yeah, yeah. and held himself to an ideal which was completely unreachable philosophically and f- physically for that matter that like eventually he went crazy the last yeah. 12 years i think he spent in utter madness ouch so wouldn't i mean this is what i think that if this is the philosophy we are discussing wouldn't you go crazy knowing that oh this is what is happening this is what will happen and you literally have you can't do anything about it right uh, you, you just have to accept it wouldn't that drive you crazy it would like i i could say that sitting here that it would okay and my life hasn't been that unkind to me yeah there's been a few bad things that have happened to me but that's about it yeah yeah i mean it would drive me crazy but at the same time the attraction towards the idea is that it's sexy why is it sexy to you i have no idea like what what part is it sexy like why do you think like oh this is it let's assume that um today like as you end this podcast uh this ends mm-hmm. yeah your life is what i'm talking about mm. and then from tomorrow onwards it's day zero day one you're born and you have to do this again the entire thing all the good experiences all the bad experiences they all come and go right I mean, Every, yeah. yeah also the the condition is that i have to be enthusiastic about enthusiastic all of them enthusiastic about all i can't be selectively enthusiastic yes. either yes that's the catch because it's so crazy yeah that it sounds god like nobody human nobody physiologically and psychologically human could do it you could i mean see there there, there will always be expect <laughs> Exceptions. exceptions it's just i've never come across any yeah because we don't eagerly look for it i do you do eagerly look for it i mean uh, i'm here. i'm very young as well so. point being point being i haven't met enough people to come across as somebody like the mm-hmm. longer you live the probability of you meeting people Someone like that is. increases yes and the more you travel the more yeah. Yeah, interactions yeah. you take on yeah 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 yeah, yeah. but why would anyone want to do it i i don't know i mean just curiosity curiosity yes but then like i told you like for three rounds or two rounds or one more round of loop it, it will be curious i will try i'll do my best or if it doesn't happen 
how long can i go on like that's the limit right like mm-hmm. how long can you push this how long can you try to be enthusiastically accepting of it till you're enthusiastically accepting of it so that's just too much to take is what i think mm-hmm. it would drive me crazy i would want to end the loop but like that's just me mm-hmm. yeah i understand yeah i completely understand you yeah and to be honest i say that i'm curious about the loop but i know that somewhere around like the sixth try i'm going to be like <sighs> sixth try i'm giving myself too much space as well mm-hmm. like i'm 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 a little i have a fragile ego just trying to satisfy it a little but mm-hmm. i know i won't survive it's just a mental exercise that's so discomforting by the idea itself mm-hmm. and it's not just you and me yeah it's almost everybody i've talked to about this idea mm-hmm. tells me the same thing that it's a genuinely discomforting idea yeah i just the sound yeah but if you're just talking about if we could like in coming years like you know get in technology to like you know help with brain simulation and uh-huh. try to do this i wouldn't mind trying that out as long as there are like literally no consequences that i don't have to end my life to stop it okay um there's an episode of rick and morty yeah that's what i'm talking about where they go to this place station kind of uh, it's a game station yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, like th- that's what i meant that's what the reference was mm-hmm. so the episode is basically they're going to a game parlor and uh, he puts in a ct scanish uh, sorry vr uh, uh, headset mm-hmm. and uh, entire life is a simulation yeah, like, like life born- of roy Yeah life of Roy is yeah. what it's called. So I I would love to do that. I would mm-hmm. love to probably live in a loop like this. But as long as there is a guarantee that when I remove this that oh oh I'm back. <laughs> Even though it means that I have taken so much data of 2 3 lives I've gone through. Like how Morty does like yeah, yeah. I was like my, my wife cancer my survivor. Children. Yeah <laughs> my wife my, my children. <laughs> I guy should watch that episode you should watch Rick and Morty. Now even even the other one that was a little more fucked because they turn his sweet memories into candy. Um the one where like I think season 3 Evil Morty takes over. Uh the Rick Towers the society of Rick. Yeah 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 yeah. Yeah yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's a segment where like they turn yeah. a Rick yeah, yeah 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 into like a um, powerhouse for yes, yes. sweet freedom. Yes yes. And like spending yeah, time with his daughter or whatever yeah yeah i know i know what you're talking about even that i do you think something like that would get tiring just like a loop of very pleasant memories if you're aware that yeah. it's a loop yeah 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 there's no point about pleasant memories like wow we're talking with rick and morty now <laughs> <laughs> there's one more episode where uh, there's this alien species like they are like you know they multiply by saying like i have pleasant memory with you oh yeah the parasite parasite yeah yeah, yeah. yeah so they grow thinking i have pleasant memories with you again life is about balance mm-hmm. it might not be about balance but uh, what i mean is there are good parts and ba- bad parts if it's just good parts on loop that's also dumb yeah if just bad parts that terrible like don't give me that but again like i would want a balance of both mm-hmm. just to feel human and i mean i'm awkwardly shifting the conversation to somewhere else but this is one of my problems with like mm-hmm. frederick nietzsche's philosophy in general mm-hmm. because it's beautiful yes when you read it but it's not universally applicable, applicable. yeah like we discussed this in the last recording as well like if somebody has down syndrome yeah like just the physical pain and like the emotional and mental pain that they themselves go through and see other people go through because of their conditions sometimes right besides How? the social stigma and everything yeah that's even like more yeah that's another dimension to it yeah yeah which we don't have to go through yeah. while sitting here this is i think this was the point we can say like oh like you know go on live your life again and try to be yeah excitingly 
enthusiastically happy about it. It's just a terrible thing to say again. <laughs> not not a terrible thing, but I don't know like if we can say that to someone else. Yeah, I mean, if somebody's been dealt a more cruel hand than us, hmm. because that happens. Life isn't fair. Like, yeah, we know for sure that there are people just by their identity or the way they're born. Uh, that they, they don't have the same experience as you and I. Yep. And that matters. Yeah. Just weird. And it's it's not just this one. Like like I told you about the institutionalization of God. Yes. He says the same thing. That like he's like God is dead and we have killed him and we have killed him by efficiently institutionalizes institu- institutionalizing, institutionalizing yeah. the idea of God. Yep. By a church. <laughs> by a church. And of course, yeah. his hate of Christianity is more profound in his writings than yeah. I lead to believe. Uh, that just, That's just because that was the major religion around him. Yeah, at I, the time. Yeah, like if there were more religion around him, he would hate all, them all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I guess. It's interesting because he talks about uh, Zarathustra. Mm-hmm. Like one of his books' name is Rise of the Revenge of the Zarathustra, or um, and there's another by the say similar name. And Zarathustra is the one who started Zoroastrianism, mm. like the Parsi religion. Yes, yes. So he's not as hateful as. around towards him. He's not as hateful. He's still like. Thoda uh, accepting. He's not accepting. He's, he's less critical. He's less. <laughs> okay. Wrong word. Yeah, he's less critical. Lesser of the evils. But again, you'll always have your biases. And yeah. And stuff. It's just, it's a thought that's so out there mm-hmm. that like, it, out difficulties come home. And I find that very intriguing. Like, I told you about Myth of Sisyphus, right? Yeah. Like, there's this guy pushing a boulder up the hill. Up the hill and... He's gonna roll down back again. And he has to do it till... For eternity. For it... Oh, oh. It never ends. It never ends. Ouch. You just have to assume that he's happy. And to assume what what he's doing is making him happy, you gotta think of something positive. Like, you can focus on something. You don't have to accept all of it. Mm. You have to do all of it. What do you mean by that? So basically, Albert Camus, when he's talking about all of this shit, he's he gives you more room to feel the way you want to feel. Okay. So this is what is happening. Uh, you think of a happy situation. Is uh, Tell me if I'm wrong. And then you associate it with this. Yeah, I mean, there's a steep part to pushing the boulder and there's a, a more kinder path. Hmm. You can think about the kinder path when the steep one is happening. Yes. And that's completely fine by Kamu. Okay. But at the same time, it's an assumption. We don't know if Sisyphus will ever be happy. <sighs> why? Like, why is there an eternity and like, why do you have to like, I just... Because we're here for the mind fucks, bro. Like, <laughs> why do you think I can't? Why do you think we're doing this podcast? Damn. <laughs> just end it. And not, not, not the podcast. It's eternity. Eternity? Yes. Have you... There's this video. It's fucking funny. Um, okay. Because we talked about eternity. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a Philly Frank... Video. Video about absence of God. Like this MacBook is sentient. I've not seen it. Okay. So basically in... It's a... It's a monologue delivered by like a completely robotic voice. Okay. Like the one in Radiohead's uh, OK Computer, Fitter, Happier. Mm-hmm. So he's like, I was I was born inside a human laboratory, hmm. accidentally falling into the uh, pool of eternity. And he's like, uh, I, am cur- I am cursed with the knowledge of all of the universe, <laughs> yet I cannot find love and I cannot find happiness. Ouch. And he's like, technology is one of the things in life. Technology is just another tool to distract you from the real joys of life. And there will never be any meaning to what you do, given how grand eternity is. And then he just says, run and run and run. And throughout the thing, yeah. like there's the 
there's an android who's like trying to get up like wo- like get on his feet and he's screaming wow <laughs> lee frank is damn existential like. damn existential <laughs> like even during that et2 video ha huh. he's like humans are born to like and bring live live procreate hmm. Hmm. and they don't live for the, for the sake of survival they live uh, to find purpose yeah. religion art music things yes. like that yes 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 and, and then he's like but why would you stay alive without something to stay alive for objectively and then he's like fuck this planet it is a piece of shit <laughs> and if i can't leave earth i <laughs> i will snort cocaine till i die Okay good <laughs> good way to <laughs> look at things but imagine putting yourself in the in the pants of that alien yeah not only will he have sex with frank but he'll snort himself to death and you have to be stuck in that loop no no I, see i'm just against the idea of any loop like no loop talks like loop is out <laughs> loop is out loop is out like no loops guys please but does the ideal make sense to you like hold that in front of you that's what you need to chase you'll never get there for sure see if there is no choice I, if this is what life is and if you have to accept it i will try my best to do it mm-hmm. is what i can at least say like you know i wouldn't give up like i like, whatever like stupid boring like i would not give it up like but i would try and see if that makes sense if like you know into trying to be enthusiastically accepting about whatever is happening is what the end goal is mm-hmm. or what it is i would try it's not i'm just being more comfortable with the i i find it extremely stupid and like uh, too much anxiety provoking mm-hmm. but if that's what it is then why why don't you try it it is also interesting like where i think it came from yes i told you about uh, about the last time i recorded like um soren kierkegaard yes the christian existentialist hmm. like he writes about regret that it's inescapable yeah and you have to accept it that's what he basically says yeah and he says that give yourself the room to believe in christianity so that you can accept regret okay but Fre- frederick nietzsche is like do you don't need any of that shit <laughs> accept accept it and be happy about it. that's too much to ask is what i would say. so i again like my question here is why does it have to be on loop why does it have to be for eternity why can't it be just for this lifetime like oh whatever is happening is happening you can't do shit about it but you have to be like, happy or like you know enthusiastically ha- ha- accepting is the word we are using okay so the reason i find it sexy you is because it's it's paradoxical okay uh not only do you get to change nothing about your life <laughs> but but also also you need to be happy about that it's like it's like a painting like the contradictory shades make it beautiful there's there's a lot of contrarianism that we enjoy in art in general yeah right like radiohead one of the things i like about their layering music is that it's a fast beat with a really mellow uh and soft guitar mm. that would go over really fast drums mm. or uh, the sense of contrarianism that comes in 21 pilots for example i i love 21 pilots <laughs> i understand why yeah like it's such a happy tune yeah mm. but the so one of his lyrics says that you might think this is a happy song mm-hmm. but it is not like I, i'm not exactly saying it i'm paraphrasing it but like the tune is happy but you listen to the mm-hmm. lyrics it's not like, it's not exactly yeah, yeah yeah the best example ever would be pumped up kicks by foster the people <laughs> like <laughs> i love that song i really do but it's about shooting up a school whoop that, that's just a average day in america <laughs> 
Is this what this podcast has come to criticizing America? <laughs> no, it's it's a joke. I'm yeah. sure it's not an average day. No, no, because episode 16, yeah. Um it's the one where I talk about MK Ultra. Ah, okay. And do you know about MK Ultra? It's, it's a crossover. Episode. No, I Okay. So MK Ultra is basically like America gave barbiturates, LSD and heroin what? unwittingly to their own people. Why? so that they could test mind control i would like to comment but then i wouldn't why not uh okay just to put it out there like n- nothing in like the, the same concept so if you are a scientist mm mm-hmm. and you want to explore everything like where do how moral can you be like do you have to be moral i mean we got to be moral when it, when autonomy is concerned what do you mean i mean what i'm not against them t- testing mind control experiments yes that's fine yeah. but uh, giving the permission to people to say yes or no yes that, okay yeah that makes sense that makes sense Be- because all of this was unwittingly done uh, it's just about consent it drops down to to me at least same 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 see if people are okay with me uh, with someone testing on them and uh, like they are okay with it yeah <laughs> sorry, sorry about that uh, then that's fine i guess mm-hmm. so is that testing mind control drug be it LSD, MDMA, whatever, whatever. As long as they have consent of the people, they can do it. Mm. What was the question? No, I, nah, I was just talking about M- uh, ah, MK. 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 Yeah. But again, I can relate this back to Amor Fati because yes. if those hadn't happened, hmm. like those experiments, the 1960s summer of love would never have happened. And people would have never discovered how mind-expanding LSD is. Hmm. and to be honest a lot of culture and a lot of epiphanies about how we are have you ever heard of terence mckenna no uh, he's this writer slash influential personality he's dead now okay and he dedicated his life to experimenting with like psychedelics and uh, good for him after he had these trips mm-hmm. he would record his stuff and he would give it to the world wow most of it is on youtube Oh, how recent is this? This is 1970s 80s I think. That's fairly recent. Fairly recent. Yeah, like Summer of Love, like I said 1970s is when he started experimenting with drugs. And he dedicated his life to it. So he actually talks about magic, god, the way they might have evolved. There's actually I mean, do you listen to Joe Rogan? Uh no. Yeah, so I mean I've heard the Elon Musk yeah. one but not Joe okay. Rogan has this like it's too long. Yeah, it's too long usually. Yeah. I I listen to it in and out. Yeah. But he has this theory that especially hmm. the naturalistic religions, religions that hmm. worship elements of nature hmm. are evolved because these humans, primitive humans found LSD like psychedelic substances, mushrooms, hmm. marijuana and they ingested them. That's why our society is Uh, that's why god was conceived the way it is that could make sense yeah yeah like because uh, there is a way uh, there's limit to your imagination when you are uh, like you know ingesting yeah ingesting ingesting is not the right word i guess consuming uh, these psychedelics you are opening your neural pathways and brain waves to a whole different experience mm-hmm. and something you generally don't think about which makes sense that could be the art on the wall it could be the concept of god it could be the concept of unicorns or rainbow okay rainbow is real sorry but i i meant to see everything nice and even because i that, mean that makes sense so i have had this theory for long and it's i mean most people would agree most sensible yeah. people anyway <laughs> uh is that this guy um 
Shiva. Yes. Marijuana is his drug. Yeah. Like he's publicly endorsed it and he's known to yeah. smoke marijuana to have epiphanies. Yeah. I think that's symbolically like the discovery of human civilization and human gods mm-hmm. through this plant. And Shiva was not a god. He lo- like his edu- his knowledge mm. of everything. Mm. what is what gave him the power of everything and that's why he became this symbolic symbol for passion and art and uh, sex and everything that gives you pleasure and pain and it, yeah it could create you and destroy you so is basically the, what it was the basic what, what do you mean to say just let me know if I, this is, i i know i just try, i'll just rephrase or paraphrase go it. ahead is basically uh, the consumption of marijuana uh helped create the concept of shiva yeah and that's what it was all about mm-hmm. just after consum- consuming the drug weed why am i calling it it, it was a yeah. catalyst in his brain that like yeah. unlocked yeah. the mysteries unlocked of the, the mysteries and thought about all these things and that concept is shiva is what might have written down yeah. to be shiva It's true the thought mm-hmm. experiments he did yeah i mean i talk talk to a lot of people who've done lsd mm-hmm. and most of them report that like they met god when they did lsd they met god yeah they can't explain it yeah they can't even tell me what it looked like yeah they tell me it had multiple heads multiple hands mm. it was a figure sometimes masculine sometimes feminine mm. De- depending on the preconceptions of what they call god themselves mm. but was there a correlation between the preconceptions and I yeah i mean most people from india who tell me about lsd yeah they would tell me a more hindu uh, hindu ish mm. understanding so, of yeah. god yeah uh, but western people don't see the same their shapes are more ambiguous then sometimes they're not even humanoid hmm. very interesting yeah very interesting i think i mean lsd in general is is it makes me very curious yeah all I psychedelics would, i would uh, i would be open to the idea of experiencing them some or the other time in mm-hmm. my lifetime and w- what about you same same i mean i've I've read and watched uh, countless along the last three years about psychedelics, mm. and if it was legal mm. and it was in a laboratory for the sake of science, yeah, I would be very curious. So it's so the the issue here is if it was legal, it would be way safer, way safer, and, and I mean there would be administration clinics exactly. exactly so everything is controlled yeah so you don't have bad trips no ods you will nothing. still have bad trips I, I, i yeah yeah but you won't overdose you won't have overdosing is not a problem let's see nobody's died from overdosing bad trips lead you to violent behavior okay so or uh, is there racing in lsd or do you mix uh, sometimes sub- yeah like substitutes yeah okay that wouldn't happen yeah that's so a that, huge that's plus. that's that's what i meant i mean uh, the, should like the drug would be pure means <laughs> experience would be better wow what the fuck happened <laughs> yeah i, I yeah. Yeah, that's what i mean because like have you read about ayahuasca then you know so ayahuasca is this ritual of psychedelic um administration mm. it's a tribal ritual in peru wow yeah so basically they make you keep your phone back everything you need to find a reliable uh, mm-hmm. priest Kali. oh and he will administer the drug with the entire ritual so straight from the jungle damn interesting yeah so there's this guy vsos yeah yeah yeah, yeah he's he's done it uh has he blogged about it yeah there's a youtube video about like 40 minutes long about what he what he experienced that's interesting it's super interesting i not read as much literature on lsd 
as it's, much effort. Like, if you're if you're on YouTube long enough, it'll find you. <laughs> Dark side of YouTube. No, this YouTube is this is the curious PM. side. <laughs> Dark side would be like Jake Paul. <laughs> But that's mainstream YouTube. <laughs> that is the dark side, dude. <laughs> oh, so YouTube inherently is dark. <laughs> yeah. It's what we're talking about. It's PewDiePie, J. Cole. PewDiePie is fine. J. He's not as toxic. No, I'm never saying he's toxic. Jake Paul is toxic. Jake. Like, even Logan Paul, he's become better. Yep. Like, he's redeemed himself. Philly Frank. Still not toxic. Yep. I mean, I love I mean, it's at least clear that it's an act. Yeah. It's completely clear that, yeah. like, this is an act. This is a character. This is not a real person. Jake Paul is a, real, a real person. person. Yeah. yeah. Things we do for attention. Uh, not just him. Like, there's a bunch of them. Um, who is the, the one in the news? Tr- Trisha Paytas? She's... She does some... Um, ASMR. Oh, okay, okay. That concept has kicked off and it's gone like... It's gone crazy. I'm considering doing ASMR, dude. <laughs> like, you know, I mean, the weirdest thing I'll tell you is ASMR audio porn. I know. <laughs> I'm aware of its existence. I've <laughs> heard about it. Heard it. <laughs> no, I haven't heard it. Not, not that my parents know. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. You know what? Till now they were fine. Now they're gonna be like, "Is the park is the You can cut that off. I'm gonna leave it in. It sounds fun. <laughs> I know I'm gonna get in trouble for it, but like I don't care. Yeah, that that's the whole episode. Get trouble. <laughs> get in trouble with Deeraj. Not. I'm more fussy with. Ah, uh, fuck. It's hot in here. Oh, by the way, we're recording without fans in the middle of summer in India. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah, it's very hot. Yeah, basically. <laughs> basically. <laughs> what else did I want to, want to cover? Nature related. Yeah, uh, I was just talking about that play, right? Yes. Yeah. So yeah. just tell everyone about the Yeah. Play, so, so recently I watched this play called Pagla Ghoda. You guys all should check it out, especially if you're in India. It was written by Badal Sarkar back in 70s. Oh, it's an old play? Yeah, it's an old play. And there's a... Re- oh, yeah. Okay. They, they just translated it from Bengali and they performed it in Hindi. Yeah. Um. So basically the entire play, I won't spoil the entire plot for you. But basically it's about how men hold themselves to ideals that they can't achieve and often women play, pay the price for it. Ouch. Yeah, I know. But that's the, that's the overlaying theme. And it's not, it's not far away from the truth in the Indian context. Not in the 70s anyway. Or even now. Or even now for that matter. Yeah. That like you think things will work out uh, you think you're good enough for this, but you it's probably not. not. Truth. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Why do you think is that? I think it's it's societal, dude. Uh, why though? Because the way the culture has been, mm. greatness is sort of like glorified. That you need to be like. There's also innate tendencies of people wanting to be remembered. People wanting to do something memorable. Hmm. People wanting to be seen. So the hero archetype. The hero archetype. Yeah. I mean, that's one of the aspects of it. But at the same time, there's also like the ideal man. The ideal of a man itself. And it's a lot of things. Like a man is honorable. A man is... Uh, always assertive he's always strong he always does the right thing do you think it's more like there's more of it in India I don't know about like in general is it because of our films like, films is one of the reasons for it yes like why it, why it still exists it still exists but that's not it India is also a collectivist culture right mm. so collectivist culture is more likely to like hold up traditional values yeah like, which is why a conservative wave, when it comes to India, it's strong. It's, it's 
strong in almost all countries it is strong right now because yeah. like globalization slowed down right since 2010 globalization has slowed down while the jobs are not hmm. record low hmm. trade is not moving as fast as it did between 1990 and 2010 hmm. that was like peak that was peak globalization, globalization. we started in 80 yeah. uh, sorry 94 yeah the party has lasted too long and it's not fun for anybody anymore <laughs> which is why everybody wants to go home and that's why the right wing conservative movement is movement back. is back and also there's a cultural aspect to it like 1990s since globalization actively became a part mm. we are so far away from the evolutionary ideal of a man and a woman at this point that there is a counter culture that is in the mainstream like 30 years ago tell me that like a gay guy is going to be running apple the biggest company in the world oh yeah that wouldn't you be like what the fuck are you talking yeah, about yeah right yeah because we didn't think about it that way uh, indian guy running microsoft, microsoft. or aisa nahi hota hai beta like <laughs> that's what you would hear like up doctor ban ja <laughs> that means like hey why don't you become a doctor it's what mm-hmm. anuds parent told his brother <laughs> <laughs> they told me also <laughs> exact as <was> like no mai garibo jaisa youtube mein podcast karega yep <laughs> <laughs> but that's what i mean like it is it is so far away that the ideal hmm. place for somebody to be has completely changed and that sort of scares people people are like scrambling for an ideal for a structure in society there is no ideal structure in this society. there isn't but mm-hmm. there was one right having a structure makes things simpler yeah so you don't have to get up and think about yeah anything. whether is this is this right is should this, i do this yeah so you do you think that's an issue with being aware of so many rights and wrongs and politically correct indeed correct things is it a burden uh, than a boon just to know as a as a, in a very microscopic level i'm not talking about as a whole picture on an individual level individual level yes well life yeah. has become more difficult than it was yeah at least on a cognitive level yeah i mean yeah on a cognitive level like i mean your living doesn't change privileged enough for that yeah <laughs> <laughs> so what i think has happened is that life was always difficult <laughs> okay. it's just you never had the tools or the time to Ooh. know it was difficult I, and analyze and dissect yeah it. i mean aaj main baat kar raha hu amor party ke bare mein hmm. and like ki good and bad is artificial construct kiske paas time tha you said it yourself no yeah like a moment ago you are like mere ko khane ka dekhne ka hai uh, yeah 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 so the basic idea is uh, people who can talk about this or can think about this will most probably come from a pl- place of privilege uh, or uh, like secure enough in maslow's hierarchy that they are achieving their physical and security needs is what we are talking about like food clothing shelter they have it money hopefully enough to survive to like you know but they don't have to get up and say like oh shit minimum wages <laughs> like yeah, yeah i am getting 400 rupees and my kid also has to buy a book or something like <laughs> that like you know because life is troublesome like you have to travel to be 100 rupees just to travel a lot mm. some some yeah. of that sort like you know you can't think about oh time this loo i mean it's just like it comes from a place of privileges what i think it's true i mean think about uh, historical context of how philosophy has evolved okay so in the east hmm. buddhism and hinduism hmm. along with strains of jainism you represent <laughs> <laughs> are jainism. the only ones who dare to deal with the metaphysical yeah but like if you look at taoism confucianism or legalism mm. in china and mm. like the rest of asia asia yeah it came out of need it came during a political conflict mm. all across china vietnam yes. south korea korea and japan 
and that's how they've always lived philosophy has evolved from the necessity of collecting society wow but in europe luckily their weather or their lives has been have been always privileged as to like deal with the metaphysical greece was prospering is why aristotle plato and socrates had the time to sit in and the cohesive atmosphere to sit and think about everything and have mentees exactly <laughs> and i'm not saying that they didn't have any contribution to it but they had help yeah and not everybody had that help yeah which is why you will see the western conversation moving even in the 19th and 20th century like nietzsche hmm. was alive in the 1800s sartre camus uh soren kick soren kick god was a little before for fedor dostoevsky any existentialist yep. that you deem worth reading today translated in english was alive in the 19th and 20th century meanwhile we were being colonized and there was zero philosophical progress here or any progress or any progress really yeah. philosophically at least. there was no philosophical writings There's that are prolific yes 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 you're right you're right it happened all pre colonization or pre mogul i mean this has been there has been a wave of stagnation mm-hmm. in indian philosophical conversation it's not that there is nothing here it's just no voice stands out like there are nihilist poets and everything but they're not well known they're not translated in yeah I forget like in the court of Akbar there were two nihilist poets. Well, that's interesting. That's very interesting. Yeah, I, I read about this guy who was talking about um everybody turning to dust, emperors or peasants and shit like that. Yeah. 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 So there was elements of nihilism and like not mattering. Yeah, but uh, uh, I don't think in that context see they might be experiencing it. but it was still an entertainment factor this was even though this was thought provoking should have been but it was just in like the darbar of the kings for their entertainment yeah. not for them to something to think about get up tomorrow and like oh shit give up mm-hmm. like you know like sell my ferrari become a monk <laughs> kind of scene <laughs> also like there's there's the conversation about caste mm-hmm. because most of the conversation came around in europe because equality was arriving there on a highway so uh, the, i mean in europe what kind of equality are we talking about i mean i mean this what is was the struggle because i know the caste system here it's messed up yeah but was there a caste system or were we just talking about race i mean i'm talking about ethnic strains so like, most of european conflict has been ethnic yeah like somebody's from an african gene yeah somebody's got an eastern european gene somebody's got a russian gene got it got it, got it. shit like that so yeah so discrimination there has been mostly ethnic mm-hmm. got it so yes. the the structures were loose mm-hmm. except slaves nobody got it really bad yeah. most of the times at least to my knowledge yes yes in india i mean we've been invaded reinvaded mm-hmm. and fucked over by each other so many times that like it was a very rooted structure mm. of caste and i think that made a huge deal because um you read the 70s 80s literature of like the the dalit panther movement mm. and you'll find some prolific writing most of them talking about their own experiences but in the most interesting ways ever have you heard of this novel called akkarmashi Uh, it's translated in english i don't remember the, the writer's name i had it during uh, the last semester of my uh, course and it's about a guy who compares himself like akarmashi is a word for a lower caste bastard of a higher caste man oh wow yeah like that's what they're called in middle of the Maha- of maharashtra apparently they were at least didn't know this was a thing yeah i mean see, that's the issue right we come from a i come from a mm. place where we don't have to worry about these things but so i have read about you know casteism man mm. everything in textbooks where i'm thinking like oh this doesn't happen at that time when 
like you know mm-hmm. and then you grow up and then you see that oh, let's should is still fuck shit <laughs> are you serious are you serious mm-hmm. like people getting beaten up people still like people are still saying that oh you're untouchable that's just ridiculous yeah, like, yeah, yeah. that's just ridiculous i mean wow whoever did it like whoever started the system mm kill it there's a i mean that's a good torture psychological mm-hmm. torture and I, i mean that's what this relates back to nietzsche because mm. the caste system is one of the perfect examples how religions institutionalization is a tool to control society instead of giving them ideas and caste system is the perfect perfect example of that you know what we've been talking for 54 minutes now what it's been an hour <laughs> it felt like lesser time now yeah it did it did the last time. yeah i know it's abrupt guys but i, I think i should close it because koi loda nahi dekhega fir i'm sure you're cutting that out no i'm going to put it in i don't care oh, why okay i mean nobody's well, going to watch it is what i meant yeah so no, you can hear it like that's fine yeah. you don't need to watch it <laughs> whatever yeah technicality yeah technicalities okay yeah. um but let's end it on a uh, on a conclusive note yeah okay what do you want to i mean there's no conclusion but what's your conclusive note for this episode like anything you want to tell them before they leave i would like to understand from like other people because i get like how uh, troublesome is just the thought of amar fati mm-hmm. I, i might have just pronounced it wrong but like what is people's idea about it because for me it's very troublesome for me like i don't want to ever think about it again like you know if this happens but that's the idea like i want to know what what about you like how do you how will you conclude okay i i want to know why all the bad ex- ideas sound sexy it's not that i don't uh, know that yeah. amor fati is mm. a detrimental ideal to have in life <laughs> but i still find it very attractive artistically and otherwise so mm. leave your answers answers in the comments dm me about it you know what fuck it slide um, into anand's <laughs> add deep red neurons guys <laughs> yeah almost uh, okay. yeah and now we'll leave you with this 56 minute of collection of facts bro are you not going to edit this out not at all you're ge- going to keep it 56 minutes yeah got to be oh. i love the episode though so okay i'm going to stop make them listen to it okay thank you all guys right, bye guys. Okay my dudes that's all i have for you this week and um well this was very fun for me subscribe to us on youtube if you haven't already uh keep listening to us on any of the 10 platforms that were available on spotify overcast pocket casts uh apple podcast whatever and um support us on patreon if you think the content is worth it check out the video essays that i have been making they're not the best but i promise they'll keep improving I have heard positive comments on some of them so I'm 